good morning students in the last class we have learnt about stomata and their importance how stomatal opening is controlled by the guard cells and we have learnt an activity that proves that chlorophyll is essential for photosynthesis in today's class let us learn an activity that proves carbon dioxide is essential for photosynthesis activity that proves carbon dioxide is essential for photosynthesis what are we going to take in this activity or experiment we need to take two potted plants two potted plants approximately of equal size taking two potted plants which are of almost equal in size as usual we are going to keep these two plants in dark room for 3 days in dark for 3 days so that all the starch gets exhausted now we take these plants in the dark room itself and we will keep them on separate glass plate keep them on separate glass plates glass plate right now at the side of one plant we place a watch glass watch glass means a small it's a depression having glass bowl it is called watch glass in laboratory we use this word 
in this we keep potassium hydroxide we are keeping potassium hydroxide okay right now what are we and the side of another plant we are not keeping anything now cover these plants or the plants with a bell jar bell shaped glass transparent glass jar with the plants right at the bottom of the bell jar you apply vaseline so that no air will be getting penetrated inside whatever the air that is present inside that is the only air available to the plant now you keep these two plants name these plants as plant a and plant b keep these two plants under sunlight for 2 hours for 2 hours under sunlight you keep these plants right after the 2 hours is over pluck a leaf from each plant and go for iodine test like how we have conducted in the previous experiment take the leaf out put it in boiling water then take it out keep it in alcohol containing be alcohol containing beaker then keep that uh, alcohol containing beaker in water bath boil it then take out the leaf and go with iodine test so the leaf from plant b as usual it shows the presence of starch where as the leaf from plant a it does not show the presence of starch in it how the starch is produced if photosynthesis is carried out just find out the differences between these two things both are having green leaves both are kept under sunlight right and plant will be able to absorb the water from the bottom okay then so water is present sunlight is present chlorophyll is present everything is present and which one is absent in plant a in plant a co2 is absent because we have placed potassium hydroxide potassium hydroxide in a watch glass potassium hydroxide is having the ability to absorb the nearby carbon dioxide from the environment since it is very limited area it is very limited area the entire carbon dioxide is absorbed by this car potassium hydroxide as potassium hydroxide has absorbed the carbon dioxide no carbon dioxide is available for this plant for its photosynthesis so when there is no photosynthesis no starch is prepared and there will not be any positive test with the iodine solution this is how we can prove that carbon dioxide is essential for photosynthesis right and we can even design an experiment that shows sunlight is essential for photosynthesis okay for this we don't require two plants we require only one plant i'll explain that also sunlight is essential for photosynthesis take one potter plant right 
with green leaves Now keep this plant under in dark for 3 days, in dark for 3 days. Now before taking this plant out, cover a part of a big leaf with a black paper. for which you can use two glass slides you can keep you can keep a black strip of paper in between them and you can tie them tightly. Now keep this plant under sunlight for few hours, two to six hours under sunlight. When you keep this plant for two to six hours under sunlight, photosynthesis is carried out. Now pluck only this leaf out and go with the test. Before going with the test, you mark this area which is covered with a black strip on a tracing paper. Mark on a tracing paper so that you will be coming to know this area is not exposed to sunlight. Then go with the same experiment. Keep the leaf in boiling water and take out. Keep the leaf in alcohol containing beaker. Keep that alcohol containing beaker with leaf in water bath. Boil it. Take out the leaf after boiling it and go with the iodine test. And this leaf, whichever the area has got the exposure of sunlight, only that area shows the presence of starch. Whichever the area is masked from sunlight using the black strip does not show any positive test with iodine solution. That shows this area could not show positive test with iodine solution because there is no starch. It is because that area could not carry out photosynthesis because it did not get sunlight. This is how you can prove that. Sunlight is essential for photosynthesis. So, autotrophs, they meet their energy requirements by carrying out photosynthesis. But what about the other raw materials that are required for the growth and development of them. So plants, they synthesize carbohydrates only by photosynthesis. Plants synthesize only carbohydrates. by photosynthesis. This will meet only the energy requirement. This will meet only energy requirements. 
but they need other raw materials also they need other raw materials for their body growth and development if you look into the raw materials that are used by the plant from where they are obtained by the plant water it is absorbed is absorbed by the roots by the roots from the surrounding soil from the surrounding soil water is absorbed by the roots from the surrounding soil right that is in the case of normal land living plants or terrestrial plants so in terrestrial plants water is absorbed by the roots from the surrounding soil what about the other raw materials raw materials means nitrogen potassium phosphorus etc okay which include iron magnesium all these things okay these other raw materials like nitrogen phosphorus magnesium potassium i what say all these things they are also taken up from the soil only so plants take water from the soil nitrogen iron potassium magnesium phosphorus all these things also it will take from the soil only but do plants take these things in the elemental form or in the ionic form right and why do these things are taken if you take the nitrogen which is very very essential element for the protein and nucleic acid synthesis in almost all living organisms so even in plants also nitrogen is required for protein synthesis and nucleic acid synthesis so this nitrogen it is nitrogen or other elements also they are generally taken up in their ionic forms either combined with other elemental ions or on the separate ionic form also if you take the nitrogen nitrogen is absorbed by the plant roots in the form of inorganic nitrates in organic nitrates or nitrites nitrogen is absorbed by the plant roots in the form of inorganic nitrates or nitrites so it can be taken in other form also organic form okay that is ammonium ion inorganic nitrates and nitrates are organic form of nitrogen this organic compounds are generally they are prepared by symbiotic bacteria using atmospheric nitrogen organic compounds of nitrogen that are absorbed by the plants are synthesized are prepared by the symbiotic by symbiotic bacteria like rhizobium using which nitrogen atmospheric nitrogen how do the symbiotic bacteria 
prepare the organic compounds of nitrogen. So symbiotic bacteria prepare the organic form, organic compounds of nitrogen which can be taken up by the plant roots using atmospheric nitrogen. Okay. In the next class we will discuss heterotrophic nutrition.